Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got with me Dr. Rob Gordon. He is an orthopedic surgeon, but more importantly, he's the past president of the International Shockwave Society and also the most experienced physician in North America when it comes to shockwave therapy. Thank you very much for that kind introduction. And I'm very excited to talk to you today about shockwave and certain indications uh, with respect to the shockwave. Yeah, so the first question that I was mostly interested in was for my patients who are looking at this modality for erectile dysfunction, they've probably heard it on the radio or print ads. And so what are some of the things that you feel are really important for patients to know before deciding on this therapy? Sure. So the most important thing is to know what kind of shock wave is being done. And also, there's a lot of nomenclature out there, different names that people use for the same thing. Acoustic wave, sound wave, shock wave, EPAT, focused, high energy, low energy. The key is, is that you want a focused shock wave device. That's the most important thing. And there's two types of shock waves. Uh, there's this focus shock wave, and then there's radial shock wave. And the important thing about the focus shock wave that's, that's so significant is that it's a very high energy and it's a true shock wave, no different from when a plane breaks a sound barrier and you hear that big bang, that's a true shock wave. Or if you're in the water and there's bombs detonating off shore, you can actually feel the propagation. This was in the Second World War. That's how they found out about the medium to propagate shock waves, that it should be a proper shock wave. You can feel it on shore. So if you're a patient, you want to ask, is this a focused device for ED? And then I know you're up to date with a lot of the uh, literature that's come out recently looking at the results of shockwave therapy. Can you talk a little bit about what some of the most recent studies are showing? Sure. Uh, and just one other thing, there's different types of focus devices. So I'm not trying to get too complicated, but there's electromagnetic, which is the most popular around the world, uh, made by certain companies. Um, there's the uh, piezo, which is rarely used. It uh, uses crystals to create a, a, shock, a shock wave. And then there's the electrohydraulic, which is what I used 25 years ago, but it's really evolved into electromagnetic now. And uh, it's much more uh, uh, economical and more effective to use an electromagnetic machine. And one of them that are quoted in the studies uh, is the dualith by Stortz. And, and I, I don't normally use trade names, but all three of the randomized controlled studies use the dualith, which show its effectiveness compared to placebo. That means a sham. So you have people that don't know whether what they're getting treated with. They're evaluated at three months, and um, it's a significant improvement with people who have mild to moderate erectile dysfunction when using a focused electromagnetic device. And, and then in terms of the patient selection, what what do you usually Right. Talk patient about. selection is yeah. great. Whether we're doing surgery or, or shockwave, um, expectations are very important. So the ideal patient is someone who's younger. Uh, they're not obese. They don't drink alcohol. They don't smoke. Uh, they don't have high lipids um, and uh, high cholesterol. So that those people, those type of patients um, will not do as well as a younger, healthier, active uh, patient. And then anything else that you think guys might need to know before deciding on if this therapy is for them? Sure. So how many treatments uh, that you need is really important. So in the studies, you actually have to go twice a week for uh, uh, five weeks. It's actually 12 treatments. You need 12 treatments. And it really enrages me when I see healthcare professional, well, come in, you may need six, 10, 12, 14 treatments. That's already a bad sign when they say that. So you know you need 12 treatments because in the double blind randomized controlled studies, that's what the protocol was. So you want to go somewhere where they're doing the protocol that's been tried and true. We forgot about something very, very important. The other study, of course, was this landmark study by uh, Dr. Um, uh, Sandoval Salinas, who showed that in double blind randomized controlled studies, again, there is no difference 
from placebo when using a radial device. So that means uh, it's like an EPAT or radial device that's not a focus device. Doesn't matter what it is, whether it's a, a certain, I don't want to use brand names, but radial devices do not work compared to placebo. As a matter of fact, in her study, the placebo did better than the radial shock waves. But it does show you the power of the mind, though. There is a placebo effect. So that is very important. And that's one of the things that are also very frustrating. There are hundreds, not a few, there are hundreds of clinics in North America that still use radial shock wave. And they use different names like this wave, that wave, or, or different names or something wave. So it's very important that if you're seeking a, a treatment for erectile dysfunction, that you use a focus device, not a radio device. And the same thing for the healthcare professional, you would hope that they also are using a focused device like the Duolith. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Gordon. I really appreciate all your expertise and insights that you were able to share. It's my pleasure. Thank you.